how to fix OBS's encoding overload message, aka how to make the recordings from OBS not look like a steaming pile of dog shit. If you're trying to record gameplay, you might see a message when you stop recording on the bottom left of OBS with the dreadful text, encoding overload. This is bad. Basically, it is struggling to render the video, and as a result, the rendered video will have horrible FPS and just be pretty unwatchable. Now, high encoding is a big issue with OBS. Because encoding the video is a very CPU heavy process, high encoding means you're maxing your CPU. So in particular, with older hardware, this situation is more prevalent. My computer now is a bit old, and its specs are in the description below. So I have had to figure out the settings which allow me to record resource intensive games and record with OBS at the same time, while avoiding this encoding overloaded error. So if you too have a middling PC, in this tutorial I will go over the ways that we can fix this. So the first and easiest thing to check is to close anything else on your system that is using CPU when you're recording. So you can take a look at the high CPU using apps in your task manager, that's not the right terminology. Um, I have Google Drive and Dropbox open so you better believe that I'm closing those and this will give you a bit more CPU to help encode those videos. So other things to consider, if you have a webcam in your scene, be sure that its settings aren't too high as that will drain resources too. So really you don't need any more than 480p for a webcam video. And if you're running quite a resource heavy game that is competing with OBS, you can go into Task Manager and reduce the priority of that game. It is a bit of a patch rather than a solution because it may not help OBS and it may make the game run worse. Alternatively, you can give OBS a higher CPU priority in Task Manager so that it is not interfered with as much, but you can do this very action along with many other changes within OBS settings. So let's dive in. So if you go in the settings into output and then recording, because that's what I'll be talking about. Um, so the main thing you can do is change the encoder. Now I use X264, for me this gives the best results. I use a bitrate of 3000 any higher and I start to overload the encoding. Um, whoops, don't change that. A keyframe of 2 is pretty standard. Uh, CPU usage preset, I use ultra fast, so basically this means OBS computes less during encoding, so it is faster and less resource heavy, but the video looks worse. Vice versa, you could use slower settings, um, which would use more CPU, um, but produce a better quality video. Of course, that is until you overload and the frames are duplicated or skipped entirely. So other encoders e exist. I also have QuickSync, um, which is a hardware encoder on Intel integrated GPUs. I tend to stick with X264 because it has a greater array of options, but QuickSync may work better for you, so mileage may vary. And there's also an NVENC for NVIDIA GPUs. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Um, as I'm running an AMD, I can't see it, so I can't say much about it. But if that's another option available for you, uh, give it a shot. Going into the video tab, the next thing that we can change is the output resolution. So the base resolution should be the screen resolution. The output in my case is exactly the same, so 1080p. Um, however, I'm strongly considering jumping down to 720p because I cannot render videos greater than 720p anyway. So if the output of 1080p is causing an issue, jumping down to 720p will help reduce CPU load. And the downscale filter is a big deal that I've found anyway. I use bilinear, which is the fastest, um, but if I use anything else, so bicubic or Lanxos, I get encoding overload. So basically this setting affects how the output is downscaled. So faster, the fastest bilinear option does not do much correction and can result in a very pixelated blocky appearance. However, this is not too bad if the base and output resolutions are the same. Lanxos is a better downscale filter in terms of output, but personally, on this laptop, it overloads the encoding every time, so I don't use it. And you can lower the FPS too, so I keep it at 30 instead of the maximum of 60. It still appears smooth, but it just saves on precious CPU resources that I don't have much of. In the Advanced tab, you can increase OBS priority to above normal, which I have done, to help combat overloading. This is similar to changing it in the Task Manager, it just means OBS hogs more CPU to finish the task. For rendering, use Direct3D. If you have OpenGL as an option, never use it because apparently it tanks your computer. It's so resource intensive. And you can leave the color settings as they are. And finally, if you're streaming, which I don't do, uh, but you are in luck because I have some tips for you anyway. So bitrate is a setting that you can turn down if you're overloading the stream. So I've seen 2000 as a minimum. 
um, I've got 2,500 here, but it's recommended to be put at about 80% of your upload speed, which you can test yourself online. As I said, I don't stream myself because I live in Australia and our network consists of a guy called Gary who picks up our internet packets every morning and cycles down to the interwebs factory to send them overseas. Um, you can also change the buffer size. A fixed buffer is, uh, is faster because it's always expecting the same size but produces a lower quality output in scenes with high movement. Alternatively, you can change this CBR to CRF instead and here you can change a number that sits between 0 to 20 normally, uh, it's 23 here, with 0 being a lossless, high CPU usage, high output quality video. So you can turn this number up, and a good place to start is in the 15 to 20 range. Um, and as I said, 23 is kind of, what the hell. So if none of this works, then you might just have to upgrade your hardware. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, if none of this has worked for you, please leave a dislike. If it did, uh, then please leave a like. And that way I can tell how useful this information is and I can improve it in the future. And if you need to upgrade your PC, why don't you put your dream system specs down in the comments. Alright, thanks for watching.